Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Jenna. This week is super busy because we have Halloween and I'm going to be at work, so I'm going to be carving a pumpkin and doing all those fun things. So you might see that on my stories if you follow me on Instagram. On Monday, we did Medical Monday, which was my start of Stories from the Box. So I wanted to start Medical Monday as an in-hospital case, an interesting one, starting with the bang. And now we're going to follow them through actual stories where I'm on the box. So for today's video, it's actually a shooting. And there's a couple things that I'm gonna highlight throughout. So for this call, I was working in the city. This was a couple years ago and I was working with my old partner and we were dispatched to a shooting in kind of a high crime, high violence area. So we were coming and ironically, we we're coming back from a really nice, nice wealthy area so that shows you what it's like working in the city so we're coming back we get off we get dispatched like right before the exit that would take you there and we get off and the incident location is the next street that's perpendicular so we're there pretty quickly from getting dispatched so the first people there are obviously maybe 20 to 30 cop cars guesstimated when we get there and turns out it's because it's from an officer involved shooting now all the officers were okay at the end of the day none of them were shot but it was an officer involved shooting so that's why there were so many law enforcement officers there so we get up there and it's just like a row of cop cars and then a bc a battalion chief rolls up and then we roll up behind them and because we had just been so close to the location when we got dispatched so we get out, we get our gurney, and we go to, there's five patients total, and we go to the worst off. As we're being led by the cops to our patient, we literally roll by a body, which ended up being a DOA, and in this case it was an MCI, so as obviously we're just going to leave that and go to the patient. So we go to our patient and we get there, it's a female, she was a bigger girl and she had been shot in the chest. Now, I love working with law enforcement officers because a lot of them either have EMT experience, military experience, or they're just highly trained and they are really great at compressions too. So in this case, this officer, I wanna say he had mil medical military experience, but I can't say for sure, but he had made a chest seal out of plastic bags and it was pretty impressive. So he, and he was like basically giving us a little rundown of the patient, um, not just like law enforcement terms, but for us, medically wise. So that was, we were very thankful for that. So I go grab the backboard, we get her on the backboard and then we get her in the back. Now, uh, a cop had come with us and then by this time, the fire crew showed up on the fire engine and the fire medic jumped on with us and we got moving. So we went to the closest hospital, which is also a major trauma hospital, and we, it was maybe 10 minutes, 12 minutes, really bad with timing now, but I want to say it was pretty quick. And within that period of time, my partner had started an EJ, so a an IV in the jugular vein, and he had also done a needle T. Now, a needle T is a needle thoracostomy and in our field and in our county, it, I mean, in the hospital they do chest seal or chest tubes and all these different things, but for us we really, we're very limited. So we do what's called a needle T and it's a needle that goes essentially not into your lung but into the space in between it. So with this patient, she had a hemo-pneumo, a hemo pneumothorax, comical structure, which is your lung, and then you have a casing around it, and there is a little bit of lubrication in there, and that's the purpose of this. The purpose of the pleura is to protect your lung, and then in between it, there is lubrication, so that when your lung does open and close, when you inhale and exhale, it doesn't rub and have friction, and it still has that protection. Now, in her case, there was air and fluid blood building up within this space. Now, normally, you know, you have that lubrication, you open and you close, but when fluid and blood, fluid, blood, and air start to build up, it comes in between, but your lung cannot expand because there's all this fluid and um, air here. So then it doesn't work, right? So then if you, it's only one-sided, which it can be double-sided, in this case, it was one-sided, if you only have one side, 
if this is the affected side, now you're you have intrathoracic pressure, pressure within this area, and it starts to build up and it starts to push over. Now, the issues with that that can happen um, is it can do things like drop your blood pressure, which is actually a standard we need in order to be able to intervene because it's now affecting the patient enough to. Um, so usually for us, that means their blood pressure drops below 90 milligrams or mil millimeters of mercury. So um, 90 systolically. Um, so things that you're going to see with this patient in earlier stages, you're going to see difficulty breathing, shortness of breath. You're going to see anxiety. You're going to see tachycardia. You're going to see that blood pressure drop, like I told you. And um, I mean, there's a whole lot of things you're going to see, but those are probably the most obvious signs you're going to see. And then when you auscultate the lungs, you're going to hear diminished or absent sounds here because it can't expand, so it's not working. Um, and then you will hear present lung sounds on this side. In later stages, you're going to see that tracheal deviation where this starts to shift because that pressure is just pushing it to the other side. You can also see jugular vein distension where you know, the jugular veins start to really engorge up because of that pressure. Um, and how this is affected systemically is the first structure to be really affected with that pressure is the inferior vena cava because it's thought to be the first like kink in, in, in restriction and blood flow. And the vena cava is what brings blood back to your heart to be pumped and oxygenated with your lungs and then go back to the rest of your body. And then your aorta is what pumps all the blood back into the rest of your body of oxygenated blood. So when those structures are threatened, when he needle teed her, um, it was air and blood that came out. And so at that point, that's how we know it's a hemothorax as well is because of all that blood coming out. And he also had placed an EJ, which got ripped out, and then he had to go IO. By this time, she had coded. And so we're in CPR status. And thankfully, the cop came because he did some really good compressions. And we offloaded into the ER of the into the trauma bay of the hospital. They ended up working her for probably they said a while, so I want to say 40 minutes. And we ended up in enough time cleaning up, running a call, and coming back to the same hospital. And one of the charge nurses that we were, I guess, like friends with who had been with the case ended up telling us that she passed. It sounds like from what I remember, all the patients all the people that the victims did not make it. Um, I know for sure three, including the shooter, didn't make it. I don't remember about the other two, but it doesn't sound like they did. So, anyway, that's Work Wednesday for you, another story from the box. If you found this interesting or helpful at all, please give a like and subscribe and let me know what you guys think in the comments. Stay tuned for next time. <laughs>